So this is an article from Sheer Post. Uh, and I found it really, really interesting. I have a lot of friends who are uh, either currently serving in some form for, form of armed services uh, or have served in some form of armed services. So I thought this article, which, which says the military wasn't a way out of poverty for me, uh, written by a gentleman by the name of TJ Thompson, was really, really interesting. And it points out something that I don't think we talk about a whole lot. Uh, and, you know, part of, the, part of the thing, I've talked to a lot of veterans that have come to my show, and as vehemently anti-war as I am, I'm not anti-veteran. That, that is a misnomer um, that, is, that is constantly levied against anti-war people. That if you are anti-war, then you are also immediately anti-veteran. In fact, if you're anti-war, you're probably the most pro-veteran because you don't want to see any more fucking veterans. You, you, you we just don't. I do. I don't want to. I don't want to make more vets. I don't want to make more veterans. And maybe if we stop doing that, maybe if we stop doing this shit, we can start focusing on the veterans that already exist and trying to get them services that they need uh, to, you know, improve their lives. Considering they were working class people that went and fought rich people's wars. That's basically what it is. That's the truth of the United States military. It's a bunch of rich people sending poor people out to die for a bunch of resources they want to steal from other countries. There's no other real way to put it. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry I can't sugarcoat that for your, your fervent nationalism, but that's just the way that it is. Uh, so, you know, I, I, so I figured let's let's read this article and uh, and and kind of to talk about some of the stuff that that uh, that he addresses here. So let's start with this. So it says it starts with I grew up in, at, on the edge of the Great Dismal Swamp in southern Virginia. We lived in a sewage sewage ravaged bug infested trailer park. I didn't realize we were poor at first. I just thought this is how things were. Which, by the way, is I think a, how a lot of kids in poverty look at it. They don't know that there is something different out there. Um, I know for uh, me growing up, you know, like the fact that I didn't grow up super poor, but I grew up like low to middle class. You know, um, we didn't have like the state of the art technology or any of that sort of stuff. Like we had uh, we had a VHS player when the DVD player was coming out, like all my friends had a DVD player. And then my dad bought like a VHS DVD combo. And shortly after that, Blu-ray started coming out and he wanted nothing to do with that. So it's like, you know, you know what I mean? Like we didn't, we didn't, I didn't grow up in the lag, lap of luxury, but when I was growing up, I just figured, Hey, this is just how fucking things are. Just like he points out here, but it was a difficult place to grow up. And as I got older, I wanted to escape it. So I took what I thought was my only chance to get out of poverty. I joined the military. So this is, again, and then, and then he goes on to say, now I know why they say poverty is a backdoor draft. Um, this is something I've heard a lot. Uh, one of the times I was in Norfolk, Virginia, uh, which, is a, which is, you know, has, has a naval yard and a lot of military veterans, uh, I talked to one of them. And, you know, he was he was he was a bartender at the bar. I think he was he might have also been the co-owner of the place. I'm, I can't remember. But he he was the bartender there. And he basically said, this was my way out. This was my way out of my small town. I have friends that say this same thing. The only way for me to get out of my small podunk town with, you know, very conservative beliefs, very traditional outlook, not a lot of opportunity. Um, okay, I just got a warning something about Odyssey, which I will try to fix. Uh, sorry about that, folks. If you're watching on Odyssey and Yeah, I can't uh, I can't figure out how to fix the problem. Uh, if you're watching on Odyssey and there's an issue with the stream, I apologize. It just told me that there's some kind of issue with the stream for Odyssey. But to go back to the point, we'll we'll, we'll sort that out later. Um, but to go back to the stream, to go back to the point that I was trying to make 
is when you're stuck in a in a very low income area like this person was uh, as TJ was and you want to get out and you want to, you know, move to a different place uh, and you can't because poverty, uh, the military is your only way out. You can't afford college because, you know, they're not going to give student loans to people that are in poverty because, oh, no, they, they might not be able to pay it back later. Who knows? We can't take that risk. Uh, you know, the financial institutions can't take that risk unless they're betting against you. Then they can take all the risk they want. Anyway, so let's keep going. So after deploying to the Persian Gulf in 2003 and experiencing unspeakable horrors, my military duty finally ended and I took the best job available to me working in the Norfolk Naval Shipyard in Portsmouth, Virginia, which I just mentioned, just talked about how I know a bunch of people uh, who are vets in, in Norfolk. Uh, the work was hazardous. I spent hours each day climbing around the tanks and voids on a submarine that had to be certified safe to enter. There was always welding, grinding, sandblasting, and paint chipping going on. When I started coughing up black sludge, I knew I had to escape again. Poverty, I learned, is one long escape attempt after another. And boy, howdy, is that fucking true. Um, you know, when when you are in poverty, all you're trying to do is escape out of it, and you finally do, and then something else comes up, because you're desperate, so you kind of take whatever comes your way. And, and you know, you, you, you got to take whatever financial opportunities that roll around in your way. So... For this person, he had to take an incredibly dangerous job that probably didn't offer a lot of health benefits. Um, and once his health was compromised, it was, OK, time to move to a different thing because this thing will literally kill me physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually and financially. Right. Like if he went to the doctor and they said, well, you have so and so disease and you have to be in the hospital for this much time. And he comes out and he gets, you know, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars in debt. Well, there goes your financial security and you're just stuck back in unending poverty again. So, yeah, so it is it is one escape after another. I've I've done it. I've taken on three, four jobs at a time trying to, like, just keep my head above water. And when that was, you know, too emotionally and physically taxing and I couldn't do what I was do, what I wanted to do and it was affecting my relationships with with you know my family and 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 people that I was dating and my friends and all this other stuff it was like okay I got to fucking I got to quit and I got to find something different I got to escape this this you know cycle of poverty and and go to a different cycle of poverty but the, and that's how capitalism operates so let's keep going uh by then I was married with children I got myself into culinary school on a path to a better life. Then the Great Recession hit. As the economy collapsed around us, we often had to choose between paying bills and buying groceries. Boy, do I know that too. Uh, you know, there were, there were many years uh, where that was a choice that I had to make. Many years um, eating just basic pasta and, you know, peanut butter sandwiches uh, you know, basic vegetables that I could find, nothing too crazy. And I, you know, I would, I, I would luck out every once in a while and find like a really good spice or something that I can start adding to my food, but really, really basic stuff. That's all I could afford, you know, and my mom would help me out here and there as well. She would, she would send me some food when I was, uh, stuck in this position. Um, so yeah, I've been there. It's like, okay, do I want to buy food or do I want to pay rent this month? I don't know. Let's let's see what happens. I guess rent is probably more important, you know, so I have been there. These years of trauma wreaked havoc on my mental health, as poverty and capitalism usually do. Uh, I got some cookie cutter drug based mental health treatment from the Veterans Associations, but that made things worse. At times, the VA treatment had had me in lockdown 24 seven I was treated as a number, not as an individual pharmaceuticals. I that is not something that has worked for me. Therapy works for me. Time alone works for me. Um, I take different kinds of supplements. That works for me. Uh, taking a walk, doing exercises, writing, being creative, um, you know, uh, finding some sort of escapism through comic books or video games uh, has, has, been, has been far better 
than uh, than pharmaceuticals for my mental health. Uh, that's not to say that pharmaceuticals don't work for you. They might, but everybody is different. But in this case, uh, this individual had negative effects to pharmaceuticals. And the job of the VA, if they treated him like he was a person, would see that and say, we got to take him off of the pharmaceuticals and maybe try some alternative therapies, uh, maybe try some different supplements. Um, but, you know, the VA is so underfunded and so overcrowded that they don't they might not have the, the resources to do that. So let's keep going. Uh, I'm sharing this because stories like mine are all too common, but we don't hear them very often, especially around the holidays like Fourth of July, which is true. Uh, more than three thirty thousand veterans have taken their own lives since 9-11 and over eight eight million Americans fell into poverty last year. Yet our country continues to spend hundreds and billions of dollars each year on war and the Pentagon instead of building real paths out of poverty for people who grew up like I did. And again, that's very true because, uh, you know, um, we're about to spend $100 billion on a, on a better nuclear device that we don't need, completely useless, completely unnecessary. Uh, Lee Camp just did a whole story about that. Uh, he did a whole segment on Redacted Tonight about that. Uh, and, you know, instead, what do we need? We need health care. We need people to uh, get help, believe, you know, with debt relief, with rent relief. Um, we need a universal basic income in this country. We need better, you know, uh, an increase in the minimum wage in this country. We need so many more things then spending a hundred billion dollars that which all that money could very easily take care of all of the things I just mentioned. Uh, and instead we spend it on the military. We spend it on the Pentagon budget. We spend it on a new nuclear device we don't need. So, you know, it becomes pull yourself up by your bootstraps or join the military and maybe we'll help you out. So he goes on to say, corporations and the military industrial complex profit from our poverty. They get cheap labor and fatter profit margins. The rest of us deal with the interlocking effects of poverty, like poor health, trauma, poisonous living conditions, and all kinds of structural barriers uh, to opportunities. This is a political choice, and we can choose differently. And we can if we reallocate the budget that we have given to the Pentagon and the $100 billion we give to war profiteers uh, and merchants of death, and we utilize it to, to actually help people. That is something that we can absolutely do, and it is a lack of political will. It is the need to create enemies that don't particularly exist, that we've been doing since, since forever, right? This McCarthyist, let's make an enemy out of somebody different so we can justify the only, only thing that America is good at, which is creating weapons of destruction, creating weapons of death, instead of actually helping people. He talked about the backdoor draft. This is how the backdoor draft operates. Continue to oppress the people in your own country so their only way out of poverty is joining the military. And by the way, if they don't continue to stay in the military and become career military, then fuck them. Because that's how it works. The VA does not get the, the, the funding that it deserves. But if you stay in the military... And and I and I, I address this in my video, uh, my my whole show about socialism. That's available on my channel. It's in the backlogs. Um, I recommend you guys go check that out. Uh, the biggest socialist secret in America is the military. If you stay in the military, the, if you become a career career military person, you get health care. You get access to higher education for free. You get a really good retirement fund. You get great pension. Your housing is taken care of. All of that for serving capitalism. So there's a pocket of socialism that works, that works really, really well. But they don't really want to talk about it in that context. Because if they talk about it in that context and you look at it and you go, yeah, wait a minute, these people, you can afford it for these people. What if we, re you know, what if we reallocate the budget and, and do this for everybody? They would go, oh, well, then that's communism. And if you want communism, then you're going to have to give up all your freedoms because everything you do belongs to the government, which is a false way, which is which is just false, just completely false. That's a whole bunch of propaganda nonsense.
I know veterans that have waited for a decade or longer to get services within the VA. If you serve a rich person's war, shouldn't that rich person be thankful to you for doing their bidding, for putting your life on the line? But they don't. Because when you come back home, how many homeless veterans are there in this country? The answer is too fucking many. Continuing on. For me, for me, things turned a corner when I found Veterans for Peace, a nonprofit organization for of veterans like me who understand that prioritizing federal spending on war and weapons over social program keeps people down. There we go. Veterans for Peace helped me connect with uh, connect to holistic treatment and supports uh, support that heals rather than harms. It also connected me to the bigger movement against poverty like Fight for 15, in which low-wage workers fight for our own economic empowerment by demanding fair wage. Finally, I found the Poor People's Campaign, which follows the steps of Martin Luther King Jr.'s efforts to end poverty in this country. Veterans for Peace became a sponsoring member of the Poor People's Campaign, making the connection between militarism and poverty. So again, something else that they won't talk to you about is the fact that Martin Luther King Jr. was actually pretty fucking socialist and would actually want people like his his view on equality and civil rights actually comes from an anti-war socialist stance, because if you're anti-war, then you are anti-racist. That's how wars operate. They they dehumanize uh, the, the people by claiming that they're enemies and and who does America claim are enemies and in a lot of instances it's black and brown people in black and brown countries and and boy fuck fuck all if they're socialists or communists if they're black socialists and black communists then holy fucking hell they'll do what what they did to Fred Hampton which is assassinate you but there's that connection between militarism and poverty it's a way out of poverty but only if you stick with it so if you're a conscientious objector if your conscience won't allow you to fight these wars and you want to get out then you're going to be stuck right back into that into that 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 cycle of poverty again and all the trauma and all the mental health and all of the detriment that you faced as a a, a member of the military they don't give a shit about. We believe that to truly fight poverty, we must slash the Pentagon budget. We can cut our annual military spending by at least $350 billion and still keep ourselves safe while building a more equitable society. And that's true. In order to keep the military running the way that it runs, you, you need roughly $300 billion. Roughly. For me, the military wasn't a way out of poverty. Instead, militarism is why so many of us are poor in the first place. But if low-wage workers, veterans, and our workers together, uh, we can make the investments we need to choose human decency over war, trauma, and poverty. So there you go. It's a veteran coming out and saying that. Um, and, uh, and if you know veterans, you know that most of them are anti-war. Most veterans are anti-war. I think I've met two or three that said, um, I had one guy in, gosh, where the hell was I? Somewhere in Iowa. I'm trying to remember the name of the town. Maybe, I, I don't think it was Iowa City. It was somewhere in Iowa. And, um, you know, I met this vet. And, and we stood outside and talked for a few minutes. And I asked him, you know, do you still support war? And he goes, which one? And I said, just war in general. Like, do you, do you, do you support, you know? And he said, if what's against the right enemy. And I said, well, who's the right enemy? And he goes, well, there are terrorists out there that want to, you know, take our freedom. And I go, do you actually, do you really believe that even after you served? Like after you, you, you saw, you know, what what wars are like you, you still believe that and he goes yeah if it's the right cause and i was like you, you know do you believe that this is the right cause and he goes hey i gotta fight terrorism somehow which you know yeah it's kind of crazy right but 
to him, that was completely rational and justified. Um, I've had other people that's, that said, yeah, we need war. That's the way that this country works. That's the way we keep our borders safe. If we have a smaller military, then we'll get invaded all the time, which I think is a very paranoid way to look at stuff. I, I, you know, these are veterans that, I, that I've talked to, but most of the veterans that I've spoke, uh, that I've talked to, not pro-war, very, very anti-war, very, very anti-war. Um, so, yeah. So let's look at your comments. Uh, Fred, good to see you. Good. Thank you for tuning in. Gene, nice to see you as well. Uh, Gene says, I'm there now sitting here in this right wing belly of the beast because it's it was this or homeless. And now it seems I can't escape. Uh, yeah. That's that's kind of the way that it is. I mean, I I, I felt like I was going to be stuck in that position as well. Um, probably why I I I stayed in a pretty abusive uh, relationship for as long as I did was because I felt like, okay, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? How am I going to afford uh, my own place? Like we're working together, and we're still kind of barely getting by, you know. And I and I didn't realize, like, yeah, that's that's a trap in the cycle of poverty. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry that you're stuck there, Gene. I, I hope that you get out of, uh, uh, of that situation soon. Uh, Gene also says these people seem to hate Biden, but they sure seem to love his shitty economic <laughs> EO. Uh, the next phase of cognitive, di uh, of cognitive dissonance that's unbelievably worse than the previous one. Yeah, the whole, well, you know, people don't, think that democrats wage war but they forget about lyndon b johnson in vietnam they forget about uh what uh clinton did to eastern europe they forget that fdr was a democrat and got us into world war ii uh woodrow wilson was a democrat that got us into world war one and they go oh different time blah blah and i mean they make these excuses this the, the the cognitive dissonance is is pretty yes like you said it's pretty intense it's pretty up there um uh Jaganatha, good to see you uh it looks like odyssey is doing okay i am i am like three or four minutes behind or, or what it's showing up on my screen is three or four minutes behind uh you know Hopefully, whatever the issue was has resolved itself. Uh, so, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button. And please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the Merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. 
Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.